I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. I still get chills in my smoke box whenever I remember that day. The utter terror that declaration created was palpable. Everyone knew what the Nazis were capable of, and there were legitimate fears that they might roll right over Britain. These concerns were reinforced by the Germans' blitz across Europe, and it became very apparent early on that this Second World War would be nothing like the first. The opening months of the war were an intense time. Between September 1939 and May 1940, the Nazis went from one victory to another. It was during this period that the famous Operation Dynamo was carried out. From the beaches of Dunkirk, more than 338,000 Allied servicemen were evacuated to England aboard a motley fleet of ships. Lauded as a great victory by the media, this inspiring event motivated the nation to properly assemble itself for war. Winston Churchill became head of the wartime coalition government, and he was quick to appoint a number of proactive ministers who ramped up the production of aircraft, coal, and other necessities. I'm proud to say that we were a critical component in getting the nation ready. Thanks in large part to the fact controller's preparedness, Britain's railways were primed to support Old Blighty. As it was during the last war to end all wars, the various companies were unified into a single force. Engines from the SR, GWR, LMS and LNER bustled about the network delivering weapons, vehicles, and materials wherever they were needed. It's amazing how quickly we forgot our differences, how it no longer mattered what engine belonged to which company. All that mattered was survival. All right, that's the last of it. That's a lot of petrol. Any idea where it's going? Yes. I spoke with one of the captains. This is part of a supply shipment for General Wavell's expedition force in Africa. The one fighting against the Italians? The very same. Phew. How's that work, eh? In the last war, the Italians fought beside us against the Germans. Not at the start they didn't. True. But they picked the right side in the end. So why are they fighting against us now? Damn politics is what it is. All that bloody propaganda has made them soft in the head. 
I guess that's why Stalin and Hitler are such chums then. Give it time. I'm sure that alliance will fall apart. Why do you say that? Because fascism and socialism are polar opposites to each other. And if history is any indication, differing ideologies inevitably lead to conflict. That explains why we're at war now. Aye. Well, we best get a move on before the enemy gets here. Good idea. I don't fancy seeing a Schwarzsticker above Brendam Station. I didn't mean the Nazis. Then who? Attention! Attention! Oh, right. What is all this then? Why are you three just standing there? We are just pondering the circumstances of this blasted conflict, Benson. Nothing to blow a valve over. Well, this blasted conflict is not going to let up just because you found the time to muse about it. Our chaps on the front lines need to be well supplied if they are to continue the fight. And that's not going to happen if you waste time gas bagging. Now, get those pistons moving. I want to see smoke, the color of pitch, spewing from those funnels. And I want mobilization. You hear me? Mobilization! <sighs> I suddenly find myself craving the front lines if it means being away from him. You and me both, Gordon. Morning, Gordon. Good morning, gentlemen. What's the matter? You seem distracted. Is this about your run-in with Benson yesterday? You heard about that? Colin was by this morning. I'll tell you what... That engine is a right old prat. He came by here a couple of weeks back, and I've never met a more unpleasant chap. He is unpleasant to be sure. But what's put a damper on my spirits is the realization he may have been right to scold Henry Colin and I. Why do you say that? Well, the three of us were wasting time chatting when we should have been working. Benson put it best when he said our chaps on the front line need to be well supplied if they are to continue the fight. It's not like you've been sitting on your tender since the war began. How many tons of raw material and vehicles have you shifted these past few months? It's not the same as being there in the line of fire with our soldiers. Don't believe the old stories, Gordon. Frontline service is neither glamorous or exciting. It's a terrible ordeal. You would be the expert in that regard, Stanley. All the same. Gordon! I just got a telephone call from Mr. Starr. You're to report to Barrow at once. Barrow? What for? He didn't say. Only that it was a matter of extreme urgency, and you are to get there as quickly as possible. Understood. I'm on my way. Hello, Gordon. Donald? Reginald? James? What are you three doing here? Don't you remember, Gordon? Remember what? Wait. Oh, no. You mean... Yes, Gordon. Operation Chariot has been put into effect. Good Lord. Sir Francis Fallen? I'm afraid so. They surrendered to the Germans earlier today. Hardly surprising if you ask me. Aye, I'm convinced the motto of the French army is have your white flags at the ready. All right, that's enough. Denigrating them will not change their situation. Or ours. Indeed, Nigel. The four of you have volunteered for the operation. You've been assigned to Bristol. Once you've finished with that city, you'll be sent wherever necessary. Any idea how real the danger is, sir? Real enough that the government feels the need to evacuate our major cities. Good luck. Stay safe. Well, Gordon, according to Colin, you wanted to serve on the front line. Will this suffice? Indeed, Donald. Come along, gentlemen. Our nation needs us.
The first time I met Molly, she said, it's best to prepare for the worse so it doesn't catch you off guard. Clearly, someone in the British government heard this wise tidbit. On June 22nd, 1940, France signed an armistice with Germany, effectively submitting to an occupation. With this conquest, the Nazis began positioning large numbers of aircraft dangerously close to our borders. Seemingly anticipating this, the War Department had secretly devised Operation Chariot, whereby the railways would be used to evacuate civilian populations from major cities to the countryside. Though the War Department had assigned a sizable corps of engines to the task, they put out a call for volunteers in the event they weren't enough. Gordon, Reginald, James and Donald had all raised their figurative hands for the job. And as Mr. Starr said, the first city they were assigned to evacuate was Bristol, where they would find a few familiar faces. Well, lads, we can now rest easy. Our Sudrian saviors have arrived. Hello, Duck. How are you? All the better knowing you've come to help us. Aren't you going to introduce us to your friends, Duck? Oh, of course. Donald, James, Reginald and Gordon. This is Wendell and William. Ah, so you two are the engines from that unfortunate incident a few years back. I'm afraid so. It was my fault. I made a deal with the wrong people. I don't think Gordon was making a stab at either of you. No, I wasn't. I was merely making an observation. Besides, that doesn't matter now. Not when there's work to do. Very true, Gordon. So we best get to it. Indeed. Where are the coaches? Over there. As you can see, the War Department has given us a sizable number for the evacuation. You think the Germans would be bold enough to attack us here? If they do, they'll have to contend with the Bristol Bowfighter. The what? Wait for it. <laughs> What on earth was that? The Bristol Bowfighter. An attack craft designed and built right here in Bristol. And we've got more than a few of them. If the Nazis want to bomb this city, they'll have to first fight through its entire air force. I almost hope the bastards do come here now. It'd be a nice dose of humility for Hitler to lose all his aircraft in one hit. Aye, it certainly would. All right, I think that's enough chit-chat. Duck, what are the arrangements going to be? The basic setup is William, Wendell and I will shunt the coaches every time a group of evacuees are ready. And you lot will be taking them to various locations about the Rossworth Vale. The first lot are going out almost immediately. Gordon, this one is yours. Excellent. Let's get these people to safety.
You lads have been outstanding. Thanks to you, we're actually ahead of schedule. Well, if you're not early, you're late. That's what Mr. Zorro says. And presently, James is late. Where is he? He was supposed to take out the next train 20 minutes ago. I'm sure he has a good reason, Gordon. He had better. That train needs to go now if we're to stay ahead. Reginald, take it out, would you? Why me? Because I asked you to. Gordon, you're not in charge of this operation, so don't presume to give me or anyone else orders. I wasn't giving orders, Reginald. Like I said, I asked you to take that train. Well, I'm declining. May I ask why? I've been pulling trains non-stop for nearly two weeks now, and I'm very tired. I'm not taking any more until I've had a breather. Phew, I should have expected such sloth from a midi. Nor'easter nitwit. Good grief. Listen to yourselves. You're arguing over nothing. We're arguing over professional standards, duck. That is not nothing. For nothing, it's certainly loud. Bust my boiler. We can hear you from up at the station. What do you want, Donald? I'm just here to tell you why James is late. He's been sent to Highbridge. Highbridge? What for? To help with the evacuation there, of course. The War Department heard we're ahead of schedule and diverted one of us to assist elsewhere. And they sent James? I feel so insulted. On that, you and I can agree, Reginald. I take back my earlier compliment. I'm so sorry about this, James. I've made you take time out of your duties. Alice, it wasn't your fault, so don't worry about it. The station master's put a call into Bristol, and Gordon's on his way. Excellent. It'll be nice to see him. So there's two upsides to your situation, then. Two? Yes. You get to see Gordon, and you can't sneak up on me again. <laughs> oh, yes. What a pity. Did you really pull that prank on Henry when you two worked on the GNR? And did he really fall for it every time? More or less. I do feel a little guilty, though. He was always so preoccupied with his health problems, it made it that much easier to sneak up on him. Clearly, he didn't mind. If I didn't know better, I'd think there was something between you two. With all due respect, James, you don't know better. Wait, really? Really? We were and are just friends. Now Henry and a certain Sterling class engine who also worked on our line, that's a different matter. Oh? Do tell. Well, well, well. Typical James. Wasting time chatting instead of working. What are you on about, Gordon? You drag me all the way from Bristol for what? To help you because you can't handle the work? No, to help me because I can't. Oh, Alice, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. What do you mean? Her safety valve burst when she pulled into the platform. The train's too heavy for me to take, so you'll have to do it. Oh, I see. I apologize, James. What's gotten into you, Gordon? I'm in a rather bad mood today. Why's that? Reginald and I got into an argument. A pretty petty one in hindsight. I reckon I know the root of it, despite not being there. You're overtired. Why do you say that? I've seen it among those engines assigned to evacuation duty. All this travelling about with such heavy trains, it wears a locomotive out. Yes, indeed. It's just such an important task I hardly think we can afford to dally. We won't be of any use to anyone if we burn ourselves out. Very true. 
I must apologize to Reginald when I get back to Bristol. Until then, where's this train going? Dolwood in the Rosworth Vale. Very good. I'll get right on it. Oh no! You think it's a drill? No, I don't! What do you think I'm doing? There's a tunnel up ahead! We'll be safe in... Oh no! We have to go back! Are you nuts, Gordon? It's not safe! We can't just leave those people! They might... No! 157 people died that day, 84 of whom were on Gordon's train. Highbridge was devastated by the air raid, as was our number four, who felt nothing but guilt. The others tried their best to comfort him, but it didn't do any good. Instead, his grief twisted into rage as he asked the obvious question, why did the Nazis attack Highbridge in the first place? As it turned out, they hadn't just struck against the small port. Others, all along the coast, have been similarly attacked in lightning-fast raids in an effort to gauge the response time of the Royal Air Force. What was seen that day was a prelude to a larger campaign that was being prepared. The Battle of Britain was about to begin.